So in the last chapter we talked about ionic bonds, and in this chapter we're going to talk about covalent bonds. A covalent bond is an electrostatic attraction, just like the ionic bond was, so between a positive and a negative. It's between the positive nuclei and the negative valence electrons that are being shared. So in an ionic bond, the metal transferred an electron to the nonmetal, but in a covalent bond, you have two nonmetals, and they're going to share electrons. And they share electrons in such a way, uh, according to the octet rule that we've learned also. Okay, Everybody wants to share electrons so they can have a full octet, like the noble gases. So everybody wants to gain eight valence electrons. The only exception to this we're going to see is going to be hydrogen, which wants to gain two wants to share so it can have two, like helium, okay, because helium has two valence electrons. So here's a picture of an atom. The little red balls are electrons, and you can see that they're sharing these two electrons, so that each side has eight, and this is your positive nucleus here. Okay, so if we start with hydrogen, right, if we say we want to form the hydrogen molecule, we start with two hydrogen atoms, Okay, and we write the Lewis dot structure. So hydrogen, they each have one valence electron. So what they're going to do is share these two electrons so that they form a bond. Okay, that looks like that. Or more commonly, we draw it like this. Okay, where this single line stands for a single, called a single covalent bond. Okay, in a single covalent bond, how many electrons are being shared? Well, two. Okay, so the hydrogens are sharing two valence electrons. And you can see up in this picture up here, you can see the two hydrogen atoms. Here you've got the nuclei, and then you can see the two electrons that they're sharing. They just kind of overlap in space, and the positive nuclei and the negative electrons are attracted to each other. And that's called a covalent bond, that electrostatic attraction. If we try two fluorine molecules and we want to make fluorine, so we're going to draw our two fluorines. We're going to give the valence electrons. Each one has seven. Okay, so we'll start by drawing the Lewis structure for that. And you can see, hopefully, that if they each share there, okay, they can each now have eight electrons, so a full octet, okay, and that's what this picture up here is showing, okay, and this picture here is trying to show more like kind of what it would look in real life, remember electrons are really just a cloud, so you got these little red nuclei, and this overlap space right here, that's your covalent bond, okay, so again we probably won't write it like that, instead we're going to write it like this, okay, again a single covalent bond, and these guys right here, these are all called lone pairs. Lone pairs are pairs of electrons that are not bonding. Okay, These are unbonded electrons, and we call them lone pairs. The fluorine molecule has one, two, three, four, five, six lone pairs. So if we want to go a little more complicated, and we want to draw a molecule called methane, or CH4. Okay, each hydrogen has one valence electron and the carbon has four. So they're gonna start pairing up here, they're gonna pair up here, we're gonna pair up here, and you can pair up there. And hopefully you can see that we're gonna make four single covalent bonds between carbon and hydrogen. Okay, and that's the methane or CH4 molecule. Let's see what happens now if we don't have single bonds anymore. Let's try making CO2. So I'm going to start with an O and a C and an O. Okay. Um, so oxygen has six valence electrons, so I'm going to draw six dots. Carbon has four. Okay, so we'll draw four, and then this carbon will also have six. Okay, and then let's start matching things up, right? So here's a sharing, and here's a sharing. And then over here, here's a sharing, 
and here's a sharing. So you can see that each C and O is actually sharing four electrons now, right? So it's going to look like this. Okay, and then we still have some lone pairs here. And these are called double covalent bonds. Okay, double covalent bonds tend to be stronger than single covalent bonds because instead of two electrons, they're actually sharing four electrons. The more electrons you have, the stronger the bond. It's kind of like the glue that holds things together. So let's try HCN, hydrogen cyanide. Okay, I've already drawn the Lewis structures here. So I'm going to go ahead and I can match up here, right? So now hydrogen's happy. Um, and we'll share here, and here, and here. So now you have hydrogen single bonded to carbon and triple bonded to nitrogen with a lone pair there. So now we've made a triple covalent bond and that has six electrons in it. So that's even stronger still than the, the previous two. So we have single, double, and triple bonds. Single bond is the weakest bond and it's long. It's kind of like a long skinny thing because it's only made up of two electrons. A double bond is a little bit stronger. It's a little kind of shorter and stronger because it's made of four electrons. And then the triple bond is the strongest and shortest. It's kind of like short and fat and really strong because it has six electrons pulling the nuclei together. So it's kind of like a lot of glue holding that molecule together. More electrons, more glue, stronger bonds. And then the last thing we're going to talk about really quickly here is something called bond dissociation energy. The energy it takes to break a bond. Okay? Does it make sense if triple bonds are the strongest? They have the largest bond energy. And if single bonds are the weakest, they have the smallest bond energy. And that's really all there is to it.